Hi guys, welcome back to the pit. What you saw at the beginning of this video was the interior of the corner store zombie side tile which I've just built. Stores and shopping centers play an important role in the zombie movie or TV series. Going all the way back to what I believe is the quintessential zombie movie, 1978's Dawn of the Dead. Until this day, it's almost compulsory for a zombie movie to provide a montage of survivors barricading off a shopping center and helping themselves to the food and other supplies within it. They sometimes even make it look like a party. This has always been a big part of the zombie genre appeal to me. I've personally always thought about how I would secure the local shopping mall in case of a zombie apocalypse so that I could have the Donut King all to myself. But what is it about the shopping center or mall during an apocalypse that we find so fascinating? One argument made in the paper Zombies, Malls and the Consumerist Debate, George Romero's Dawn of the Dead, is that in a zombie apocalypse scenario, the survivors can indulge in a fantasy of purchase power. The paper posits that Romero's Dawn of the Dead makes and depicts two points re-consumerism. One, that it's morally perilous to those that can afford to buy into it, transforming them into a kind of zombie. What the hell are they? They're us, that's all. And two, economically exclusive to those who can't. You know the crime? What? The only person who could ever mess with this gun would be the sucker with the bread to buy it. So I get that it's pretty fun to imagine having the local supermarket all to yourself and being able to dig into a seemingly endless supply of your favourite food or to take that expensive jacket you wouldn't otherwise be able to afford but I think there's actually something more there. I think the author was really getting at something when describing the audience reaction to the film. The film's transformation of the mall's rational, quotidian environment into an orgy of violent indulgence has a deep attraction for its American consumers. I believe that the appeal of the apocalyptic story is more to do with escape, rather than just the free access to resources. As Chris Begley expresses in his article, Why Apocalyptic Fantasies Appeal to Us Psychologically, our apocalyptic fantasies capture something we long for, the chance to do it all over, to simplify, or to get out from under something like debt or loneliness or dissatisfaction. It is decluttering on a grand scale. It allows the possibility of living life on our own terms. We can set our own agenda in ways that we currently cannot. We realize it would be tough, but we would be focused. Life would be hard, but simple and satisfying. The shopping center, or mall, is regarded as the epitome of our modern consumerist culture, and in our minds, constitutes a major part of the system that regulates our lives. Hence the enjoyment we get watching Apocalypse Survivors loot a shopping mall is not just about the consumption of its goods, but reveling in the downfall of the modern system, whatever we imagine that to be. I actually started building my zombie side table during the pandemic lockdowns, and it was the images of the riots in Minneapolis that really inspired me to build an apocalyptic cityscape. On top of everything else that was going on, seeing the large, glossy shopping centres being looted by hundreds of protesters without a police officer in sight really gave me the feeling that the world was about to fall into chaos. I'm not trying to promote a political opinion here, I've just always been interested in what about the zombie genre appeals to us on such an instinctive level, and why the shopping mall is so central to this. But let's get back to the terrain. Today I'm going to show you the steps I took to detail the corner store interior and construct its roof. I'll start out with the roof. The first step in building the roof was to cut out a floor in 6mm thick construction foam, the same dimensions as the shop floor. Um. Uh. I then measured out a grid pattern on the roof of 2cm squared tiles. Next, I went over these lines with a hobby knife, creating a shallow cut along each of the lines. I then cut out the second story walls of the building, which were about 10 centimeters high and the same length as the floor tile I just cut out. I then glued these together at a right angle. The roof tile was then glued on top of the second story walls. Once the glue was dry, this could then slide into place behind the building's facade. I then just gave it a quick paint job and it was ready to go. Once the roof was done, I was able to move on to the interior detailing, starting with the front shop section. 
Here you can see I've organized the store layout, using a variety of shelves, countertops and stands from Mantic Games to create something somewhat realistic. These components will be painted and detailed before being fixed into position. I start by giving them a base coat and then applying a wash. Once the wash is dry, I give them a general highlight. I then painted the individual products on the shelves and stands using a variety of different colours and adding a basic highlight, without any extra detail. The detail would be added later. I then printed out a variety of miniature grocery store packaging and magazine and book covers at about the same scale as the products on the shelves. Starting off with the magazine covers, I cut out the miniature titles and glued them onto magazines on the rack that matched in colour or theme. The key is to make it look as real and seamless as possible. I then did the same with the groceries on the shelves and matched and fixed labels of the same or similar colour onto the products on the shelf. Here, I decided that the tubs on this shelf should be protein powder, so I printed out some labels especially. I followed the process again for the books. Here I cut out the front cover and spine of a book, and then folded it appropriately to fit over the model. Next I decided to create some loose book miniatures. This time I cut out some complete book covers, back and front. I then cut out several squares of paper, and glued them one on top of the other, aligning them all on one side. I aim to make the thickness of this pile about the same as that of the miniature book spines. I then glue and fold the book covers onto the paper pile, with the cover on the top of the pile, the spine at the side, and back cover on the bottom. Once dry, I cut the books out with a hobby knife. Now onto the stack of cans. I realised that I needed to sit these cans on a crate or stand, kind of like the ones pictured here. So I quickly built one using evergreen card and strips. Once that was done, I then began gluing labels onto the can pile. To add a bit of detail, I printed out some price tags and added them to the shelves, including the one empty shelf. Now I was ready to fix down the components, and I did this using liquid nails. Once the components were glued down, I constructed grocery items from scratch using the printed templates. I cut these out individually, and then glue them onto a piece of card cut to the same dimensions as the complete box or package. This is very fiddly, and I don't mind if the end result looks a little bit rough. This is meant to be a recently ransacked store. For the chocolate bars that I printed out, I cut out a strip of thick card that was roughly the width of the chocolate bars, and then wrapped the packages around it, aligning the labels to the top. Once the glue was dry, I cut this up to create individual chocolate bars. Once I had created enough of these grocery items, I placed them on the empty shelf and front counter. I also kept some aside for the final weathering stage. Once that was done, I moved on to the next room, which I decided to make a boiler room. I painted up a boiler that I got from a Mantic Games kit using bronze and oily steel. 
I then added some rust effects in the steel section and some green streaking grime on the bronze section to simulate copper oxidization. I then fixed the finished model down against the wall in the room. Finally, it was time to tackle the last room, which I decided to make a storage room. I wanted to create something similar to this. I started off by building an industrial shelf. First step was to cut four 5cm long strips of thin evergreen angle strips. Two of these strips would act as the vertical rails of the shelf's frame, while the other two would act as the cross beams. I glued one beam 2cm off the bottom of the frame, and the other at the very top. I duplicate this process to create the front and back of the shelf's frame. I then cut some thin evergreen card into 2 by 5 cm long rectangles. These rectangles would act as the shelf's deck. These decks can sit at the bottom of the angle strips, which I fixed down with glue. Once that was finished, I paint the shelf light grey and stippled on some oily steel to create sections of metallic sheen. I then stippled on a dark rust colour over the shelf using a piece of rough sponge. I mixed some rust pigment with water and PVA glue and also stippled this over the shelf. To finish this off, I sparsely stippled bright orange onto concentrated sections of the rust pigment. Then I had to create some stuff to put on the shelf. I did this by cutting out a box template from a piece of thin card, which I folded up and glued together. I made a heap of these as I planned to spread them over the entire building and not just on the shelf. To add a bit of extra realism, I glued on some labels. Then I glued a few boxes as well as some other components I had painted up onto the shelves. Finally, I also painted up a Mantic Games cleaning cart and added it to the room. Then it was time to bring the whole scene together with the final weathering. I first added a pigment wash using European soil around the edges of all the rooms. I then glued down the loose books and grocery products I had built earlier onto the area around the shelves and the edges of the rooms. Once I'd fixed down the groceries and books, I sprinkled various colours of dry pigment around the shop floor. This is to simulate the food and other products being spilt during the various zombie and human raids. Then I wet the brush with some water and PVA glue and began spreading out the pigment in splatter or pooling patterns. I then glued down the remainder of the large cardboard boxes I had built across the building. And that was pretty much it. I called it done. Looking back, I think the results are pretty good, um, but to be honest, it's not my best work. However, I think this interior will definitely add the desired flavor to my zombie side table. Thank you for watching everyone, and please remember to like and subscribe. See you on the next one.